Welcome back. We are currently talking about I squared C. Let's review what we've done last time. We're working with the I squared C1 feature, and we're mainly focusing on the control register number two. We've applied the slave address. We put it into write mode, and we're stating that we have only one byte to send. The start condition is established. I'm going to make a space here so it's a little bit clearer what's going on. So we have a start condition and then we have a stop condition. And in the middle of that, we have the transmitting of the register address, which is 2C. Each one of these main communication pieces, like the start, the stop, and the transmit, always have some confirmation before it goes to the next thing. We tell it to start, we make sure it starts. We tell it to transmit, which is putting a byte into the transmit data register and we make sure that the transmit data register is empty. And then we do a stop, and then we make sure it stops. We transmitted a 2C for the register address only to be able to read the contents of that register. And when we do read that register, we should see this particular number on that register. So according to the data sheet, we've completed with the single byte read, we've completed the start, the slave address write, and the transmission of the register address. Now we can go ahead and read that, the contents of that particular address. So we need to do a restart, and then we need to do a read and the slave address again. Instead of a write, we're going to be doing a read, which is a one. And then we're going to store the data into the receiving data register. So let's go back to the code and see how that works. Remember that we need to establish whatever we need to do before the start, which includes the number of bytes we're going to be reading this time. And then we're going to establish the read direction, read write direction. We don't need to put the slave address into the control register again, because it's this doesn't change, it stays the same. So we only need to take these two things, the, the read write direction and the number of bytes, and then we're going to do another start. So let's go ahead and just take this, all of this code here, and we're going to do a copy and paste. I'm gonna include the comment as well. And we want to do it before the stop, because the stop is the end of communications for the I squared C. So now I've pasted that in. So let's change this from a write to a read, and that's just putting a one into that register. So we're just going to or the read write bit, putting a one there. You've probably noticed that there's some repeating code here, and that's something we can we can clean up right now. So let's go ahead and create a function that does the reading and writing and then the start. So let's take this bit of information here this bit of code, and we're going to create a function to set the read-write direction, the number of bytes, and the start. I'm going to cut that, put a little bit of space here so I know where that goes. And I'm going to put it up at the top because I don't want to make a prototype. And I'll just create a placeholder here. We'll call this one I2C start with a, for the name. And then the, I'm going to have two, I think I'm going to have two, two inputs here. Let's go ahead and put the code in first so we know what those inputs are. So we know we need to either read or write. So let's go ahead and put, unfortunately C doesn't have a Boolean. I could just say like true or false or something like that and it'll go to a read or write. But it doesn't have that so I'm going to split this up into two functions. One for read and one for write. And on the read I will... Actually, let's make this the right first because I have it already set up. And I want to apply a number of characters. So I'm going to use the int. I'll call this number of bytes. To write. I'm going to go ahead and make this verbose. I could just put like an int and one and a zero, one or a zero to specify whether it's going to be a read or a write. But that starts to make the program language or the code unreadable and I don't want to go in that direction so I'm just gonna make two of these okay so I squared C read and I'll change this one here to read make it easy to understand and I'm just gonna take the one that I created here instead of copying the other one since I already changed the read okay so the integer number of bytes to read and the number of bytes to write, I want to add in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just replace this. This should work. 
and we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy this and put it right into where it needs to go because we're writing and the number of bytes to write is going to be one. So this would come right after we establish the slave address. Let's go ahead and change the other one here. So I'm just going to copy this just like the other one. So we're only going to be reading one byte in this case. So I think this is pretty clear. So we want to establish the slave address. We want to do a, a start write of one character, one byte, and we're going to do the one character. And then we're going to do a start read, and we haven't established the, the read yet, but there's a little bit more refactoring we could do within here, because this is still duplicating code, and I don't like that either. So I'm going to add the code that's not duplicated, or keep the code that's not duplicated, and send the other duplicated code. So what we're doing here, the only thing we're changing in this start write and start read is this line here. So this line has to stay. But the rest of them are identical. So let's create a function called i squared c start. And we'll enter the number of bytes again. We're not going to specify whether to read or write. And we'll just copy this or cut and paste this code into that. And now we can replace that with the function name. But we want to replace the number of bytes to write into here because we're transferring the number of bytes to be specified right here. We're transferring that into the i squared c start number of bytes. Let's do the same thing to the the read side. Okay, so we're going to ch change that from write to read. So we've created two main functions, start write, start read, and any duplicated code that we had in there, we put it into its own function. Uh, we want to change this to number of bytes, and this goes right here. All right. So now the main program is pretty easy to read. We're doing a start write, one byte, start read, one byte. So let's go ahead and do our code for reading the byte that's on the line. The reading is actually very similar to this, the writing on the line, but we want to make sure that our read data register is empty before we put information into it. So while, let's go ahead and put our, our two parentheses in there because we're going to be notting this. It's, while it is not, we're going to use the ISR register, the status register. And well, our mask is going to be the RXNE register, which is the receive not empty register. And when the receive not empty register is a zero, we want it to stay at this location. We don't want it to move on. Only if the RXNE is zero, the receive not empty is zero. And right here we have it's not one, which is zero. We're going to hold while it's zero. We don't want to mess with the microcontroller while this is happening. So we want to hold while it's zero. If the RXNE, the not empty register is, is the bit is one, meaning that the previous received data byte has not been read, the SCL line is stretched low until the I, the I squared C data register is read, meaning that we actually look at this register in our code. So this is telling us that the RXNE will be one while the data register is holding the data until it is read, until we actually physically put the code in and it, it reads the data register. So let's go ahead and do that. So while it is zero, stay here because it's doing some process to put the data onto the data register. So let's go ahead and read the data register so we can inform the microcontroller to go to the next steps. We need to take this information from the data register and actually put it in some, some variable. So let's create a variable. I'm going to put this in an unsigned integer and I'll call it received data. We should be able to just assign it as we declare it. So let's go ahead and assign it here. And we're going to take out, take it from the I squared C one, and it's going to be the RX DR variable. We're not going to do anything um, with this variable because right now we're just looking at the line and seeing if it's 
doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we'll take a look at the logic analyzer instead and see if we've received the correct data on that line. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and build it just to see if we have all of the programming correct. Okay, it looks like we have an error here. The first one is just a warning. It's telling me that I'm not using this, this variable anywhere else in the program. And that doesn't really worry me that much. So I'm just going to ignore that one. But this error is a, it's a fatal error. And I forgot to put a one here in the I squared C. So let's change that. So the error is over here. Just put a one here. We'll do it again. So it looks like I only have that warning here. I'm not too worried about that. And the build was successful, so I'll, I'm going to flash the chip while I am monitoring that the I squared C lines to see what kind of condition I get. The microcontroller has been flashed. I'm going to go ahead and start the analyzer. So I should have some information on the analyzer while I was plugging it in. And you can see that I do. Let's take a look at what it has captured. We know this is uh, correct because we have a write and it's a 3A, which is the, the 1D, which is the slave address, and then a zero after that, which creates a 3A number. And then we're entering the register address of 2C. And then it immediately does a read, which is the slave address, which is the 1D, and then a one after that, which is 3B. A, a zero and then a one would be from an A to a B. So that's pretty easy to understand. And then it gives us a zero A, which is interesting. This is a carriage return a symbol. That was the ASCII version of a zero A. And then a NAC, which is the stop. So let's take a look and see what the reset value of that register is. And it is one zero one zero. So let's take a look and see what one zero one zero is. So the conversion of one zero one zero does convert to A or 0x 0a, which is exactly what we what we got on the on the SDA line. Let's take a look and see what the waveform looks like. So I'm going to zoom in. And you can see that there is a start, which is the green um, the green dot on the SDA line. And then we have another start and then a stop. We know that we did the first start and we have the slave address and the right bit after the first start. And then the next one, we can't see yet because we haven't zoomed in far enough yet. We have the 2C, which is the register address. We have a restart condition here. And we have a read, which is the slave address and the, or the first bit being a one. And then we have a, the actual data that's on that register of zero A. And then finally the stop condition. So in this video, we have successfully written the slave address and a write. We've delivered the register address to the line so we can read that register address. And we got back the correct reset value of that register address. Additionally, we created a few more functions so the program can be more easily read. And we can still see there's, there's quite a bit more cleanup that we need to do. We can put all of this code into an, an initialization function. And then we can create a header file that contains all of these functions. So in the main program, we have very little code to apply. And then we can do much more complex tasks when accessing slave devices, reading and writing from them. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh, look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh, no, that's not me. Oh, yeah. And go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.